Welcome back to Sustainable Energy. Today we meet innovators who have been inspired by plants and animals to design the world of tomorrow. A world that perhaps could do with better lighting methods. You might have heard of the term light pollution. It turns out it's about more than just not being able to see the stars at night. It's posing a threat to our ecosystems and even to human health. But some people are working on it. Take a look. The impact of artificial light on wildlife and the environment has recently appeared on the United Nations agenda. In 2020, the UN stated it can disrupt photosynthesis and severely affect animal activity. And we humans are simply not programmed to receive that much light at night. We evolved as hunter-gatherers around the equator on the plains. We were exposed to bright daylight for at least 12 hours a day. And then at night, with the exception of orange firelight and, say, the moonlight, we were exposed to darkness. Exposure to artificial lighting has been increasing since the invention of the light bulb, and studies have shown that too much night exposure can stop the production of melatonin, a hormone produced in pitch darkness that doesn't only help us sleep better. Melatonin is a hormone that prepares our brain and body for sleep. It does other things as well. For example, it, it plays a role in the process of identifying cancer cells and targeting them for destruction. So it's a really important hormone. Glenn Landry promotes a return to more natural lighting systems using technology available to us, but that can also mimic the sun cycles. He's been advising Sarah Morgan, an industrial designer who has developed a tunable lighting system that adjusts the light spectrum to human needs using some very small particles. We use quantum dots. They are nanocrystals, and when they're excited, they give off energy in the form of light. So when I turn this UV light onto the quantum dots, you can see that they are emitting at incredibly high efficiency. We use these materials in our lighting systems and we modulate the amount of light that they emit throughout the day in order to emulate sunlight. And for Sarah, the future of sustainable lighting is not made of light bulbs. Our focus as a company is programmable paint. So with every iteration of our technology, we're moving closer and closer to embedding quantum dots into our walls so that we can emulate sunlight moving through the room throughout the day the way that it would if sunlight was coming in through the window. New technologies, new supports and new visions. Dutch artist Dan Horsgaarde has also been looking for ways to minimize the use of artificial lighting in nature. The way we're treating light right now, and especially in cities, is really bad. It's not energy sufficient, electricity bill, bad for animal, bad for people. Rosegarda uses unexpected sources of light in nature. They include microalgae and natural ink. This looks like a normal rock, nothing special, but it's actually embedded with a um, very special ink, which makes it light emitting. One of the projects we're working on is combining the notion of science and nature and working on um, glowing trees. So at, at daytime it looks like a, yeah, like a normal piece of tree, but the moment we go to a dark space, it, uh, it glows at night. We developed a sort of biological ink, which actually enhances the well-being of the tree and doesn't harm it. And it charges at daytime and glows at night. And that would be enough for wayfinding or uh, guidance to reduce the, the ugly, uh, polluting streetlights and to maybe bring back more trees and more nature into the city. That's the smart city, in my opinion. That's the future city. The UN Environment Programme estimates artificial light is increasing by around 2% every year. In 2020, the Australian government published a set of guidelines to mitigate the effects of artificial light on wildlife, astronomy and human health. While better light management is recommended, natural lighting is a solution investors are yet to explore. We should have trees that glow at night to replace street lights. Yeah, we should have light which is biological, you know, which grows exponential, uh, which doesn't have an energy bill. Um, yeah, we should have highways or bicycle paths which charge the daytime via the sun and glow at night, uh, reducing the light pollution, reducing the energy bill. That's the future. There's no way back.
We are back in Tino's with Alessandro Bianciardi from Biomimicry Italia. How has biomimicry already helped shape the world we live in today? Well, uh, biomimicry definitely helped already in shaping uh, the world and uh, it will keep on helping in the, in the years to come. Lots of uh, uh, ideas inspired by nature are already among us. And for example, uh, the way we manufacture things. We learn from nature how to develop new chemical processes that are less uh, toxic for us and also uh, more friendly for the environment. Uh, for example, uh, we developed new sustainable material looking at how the shells they build their structure, creating new composite material, which are very tough. We learn from the spider net how to make new and more resistant uh, fiber. And uh, we also learn uh, to develop uh, urban water management system, just looking at how forests uh, manage uh, water. And the list can go on. Going forward, what role can biomimicry play in addressing the challenges facing our world today? Uh, actually, nature seems capable of finding compromise amongst uh, everybody's needs within a planet with limited resources. So for sure we could find an integrated solution for challenges like water scarcity, food supply, and we will be able, for example, to build up a circular economy looking at nature or build up a regenerative society. We will be able to adapt also to climate change, for example. On an, an individual scale, uh, can we practice biomimicry at home, for example? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> At all ages and with all the backgrounds. Material is available. You have plants at home. You have your pets. Absolutely. You just can take a broccoli, for example. You start to look at it, try, touch it, see the color, and try to imagine why it, the broccoli is like this. And then you can imagine, okay, what can I solve with this type of shape? And then you just let your creativity go. Thank you, Alessandro. Stay with us. When we return, we go to Sweden to meet an architect who thinks that when it comes to heating and cooling, termites know better. The termite nest is a sun collector. They are cooling the incoming air 